What's going on guys? Welcome to the video. In today's video, I'm going to tell you how I built a six million dollar trash company in less than three years. It's going to look like this. It's going to be a lot of fun. Let's get into it. guys so we're vlogging today I've got a couple of front load dumpsters to deliver and I'm gonna take you along with me and as I go through my day I'm gonna tell you what the biggest contributing factors to the success of this investment were and of course I am talking about superior disposal we started advertising for this company back in November of 2018 and we opened October 1st of 2018 today is October 7th of 2021 so we're a couple of weeks away from our three-year anniversary we obviously started out with zero customers and as of this week we had 3,555 customers we should hit 3,600 in October so this is like a steady growth of about a hundred customers a month for three years and I'm gonna just get right into it the the, the one of the biggest things that contributed to this um, is the opportunity I, I did a video recently called should I start a business or should I buy a business and one of the things I talked about in there is opportunity I'm always looking for the opportunity because opportunity is the biggest accelerator you can have in your business and what I mean when I say opportunity is there's really two things the first is the growth in the market you're in if you're in a market that isn't growing and one guy has like basically all the customers in an area and they provide a pretty good service and it's priced pretty good you're gonna have a really hard time taking business from them and you're gonna struggle to grow your business you're both gonna struggle because you're gonna take a little bit of business um, they're gonna lose a little bit and there's really not enough to go around but in a high growth market you can go and start a business and grow a business while your competitors are growing at the same time um, it's much easier to build a business so one of the things I look for is 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 growth in my market and we're in Central Texas so right now there's a lot of growth there's a lot of opportunity the second piece of that is the competitor um, the competitor in this area had it was a national company that had just bought out a local guy that's like the ideal setup um, when you have something like that you could send your business plan to the national company and tell them exactly what you're gonna do and it's not gonna change anything because national companies are focused on a very broad set of assets they're not focused on like a couple of a couple of trucks down in Central Texas that you know has three or four thousand customers it's just not what they're concerned with so our competitor was providing very poor service and they weren't responsive at all if people called to complain they really didn't care and I was watching all this unfold on Facebook and people in the community were talking about it so the growth in the area was right and the competitor was bad so it was like the perfect opportunity and the perfect setup for me to come in and start a business so the next thing I got right is the people. When the national company that I mentioned bought out the local company, there was a lot of people that worked for the national company now that didn't want to work there. This happens all the time. And one of the guys that worked there actually agreed to come to work for me. And he had just retired um, when the national company bought him. He said, I don't want to have anything to do with this. I'm going to retire. And he said, I'll come to work for you and I'll give you a year. I do this a lot when I don't know something I hire somebody that does know what I want to know and then I learn from them in this particular situation it was really good because he was kind of like I don't want to work for you forever but I'll teach you the business and then I'm gonna go back into retirement on top of that 
I had people that work for me already in my management team that understand business, we understand logistics, we understand finance, we understand all the pieces of business in general, we just didn't understand everything about the garbage business. So in a lot of ways, we just hedged our bet. The other piece of the people thing is the customers. Like these customers gave me a lot, a lot of slack here. They really, really, really worked with us to help us get our company going, to support us. So people was the second thing. Um, I'm going to hook onto this little trailer. This is like the coolest little thing right here. Um, we use this to haul front loads, but I got a couple of front loads. I'm going to hook onto the first one, take it, deliver it. Then I'll give you some more reasons that this company was a success. Okay, so I'm coming back for the second front load dumpster, and this is the next thing I'll tell you that contributed to the rapid success of my garbage company, was we marketed it very well. Um, the opportunity today as a business owner is insane. Social media is such a great tool to grow your business. We used a mix, I would say it was like, 95% organic ads and five to 10% um, paid ads, but we used a mix of organic and paid ads to grow our business. We would do things like, like share win competitions. And what that is, is if you like this post and you share this post, you could win a Yeti cup with our logo on it, right? Um, we did a lot of that kind of stuff and it went very, very well. When I talked earlier about the opportunity in the market, when you have a competitor that is falling down on the job and you do things like these organic ads, that opportunity will accelerate how well your ads do. And that's exactly what happened in this case. People were looking for an alternative already, so they were very likely to share that post to help us grow our business. The other thing we did is we threw out about a zillion of these. I did a video a while back um, and it was about, uh, it was called Grow Your Customer Count Aggressively and it was about me throwing out some of these flyers. In the last three years, I personally have probably thrown out, I would say at least 10,000 of these flyers just to get uh, 3,500 customers. But the thing is these things are really, really great if you want to go and put the time in and the effort in to throw them. And what they're great for is like you send out a mailer to an area and then you're going to pick up a hodgepodge of customers on that route. And then you can go back and target the in-between customers that you missed to make your routes more dense. So these on top of the social media marketing we did was huge and some mailers. We didn't do a lot of mailers, we do some mailers. Like we might send out like two mailers a year, you know? Um, but I would say mostly social media and flyers is how we built these routes so quickly. I'm gonna take the second front load now, I'll see you in a minute. So I delivered my two dumpsters. I actually had somebody else call in 
wanting a dumpster and it was on my way home. So I have dumpster number three on right now and I am kind of heading towards the house. So the last thing I'm gonna tell you that contributed to the rapid success of this garbage business was capital. Capital is like one of the biggest things when you're starting a business and trying to forecast how much capital you're gonna need is very difficult. Most businesses that fail it's because they ran out of money. And a lot of times they ran out of money because they were like a victim of their own success. They're doing real good, they're trying to grow quickly, and they're not making enough profit to reinvest into their business, and they run out of cash and it's over, right? Or they have to take on some investor on terms that they don't like just to kind of survive. I also talk a lot about your dream business and having the capital to build your dream business and if you're not at that point yet to build starter businesses and sell them and ideally you're going to build something that's like a sweat equity business that you can sell an example of this would be like a pool route right um, i could go start a pool route it's 100 percent sweat equity and door knocking and when i get ready to sell it there's people that are ready to buy those kind of those kind of businesses um, the, big, the biggest expense I'm gonna have is like a pool pump or, or something like that, you know, a couple grand. It's all sweat equity. So if you're not at a point where you can build your dream business, build a starter business at sweat equity and sell it. When I built this company, um, I, I have something like probably 700 dumpsters out, 200 roll-offs, um, probably over 4,000 cans out and 14 garbage trucks so i have a lot of capital invested in this company and what that did is it shortened the timeline um, that it took me to get from zero to where i'm at now most businesses like this they start small and they very gradually grow over time um, and they reinvest what they can to grow their business. If you have the capital, you can shorten that timeline a bunch by investing heavily in the things that you need to support that growth. And that's exactly what we did. We were super duper aggressive with the way we marketed this and we were super duper aggressive with the way we invested in the right equipment and the right software so that we could be successful. So, I think this video, um, for me at least, it just acknowledges that if you have the right opportunity and you put the right people in that place, even if the right person is you, um, and you market it well, and you have the right amount of capital to support this, or you're, you have access to the capital through an investor or something like that, you can very rapidly grow a very nice business very quickly. If there's questions you have about this or follow-up videos to this that you would like to see, drop a comment below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.